We try to do a presentation uh, of the whole system uh, to be to be a bit precise of what uh, what can we do in the Lismat plugin in QGIS, QGIS and uh, how the the web application uh, works. If it is too too much uh, description, so you can just stop me. Uh, okay, we know. Uh, if you have questions. <coughs> Please feel free to ask questions during the presentation. So uh, this is uh, the Alaska uh, dataset, uh, open in QGIS, XQGIS, and I I just chosen some of the, the layers and uh, and did a very simple symbology. Um, so I have some uh, big thematic groups and I uh, I put some layers uh, on it. What I want to do is uh, kind of a bit like uh, QGIS web player does, is to have a web application with the, the same layers uh, of my project. But what we have tried to, to do in this app is um, create a plugin, uh, it's Python plugin, um, which helps the user to configure what he really wants to have in the web application, the scales, uh, the, um, the, um, the behavior of the groups, and things I, I will show you later. So uh, it's a Python plugin which is uh, which is in the public uh, repository, repository uh, version 1.1.1. Uh, the plugin um, runs some uh, checkings before starting. If uh, my project is saved, uh, if uh, I have a project open, if I have some uh, parameters defined in the WMS uh, tab of the, the project properties. Uh, so this is the, the main uh, user interface. I uh, reproduce here the trees of uh, the, the century as QGIS uh, says. And uh, here are several uh, fields which the, the user can use to, um, to, param to, yeah, to, to, to say, okay, I want sizer, I want an abstract for this layer, and I have some other options I will uh, go through after. Uh, another tab is map options. You can, uh, because it's a web application, you have to, to tell which uh, image format, for example, you want, and which scales you want the, the user to have. Uh, so uh, you can choose a minimum or maximum scale and some predefined zoom level number. Uh, or you can define uh, scales in, uh, the, in the map unit. Uh, here, uh, I, I've chosen three scales. You, you can add more base layers uh, if you want to, some open street map or Google. Uh, it's just an example. Uh, in the future, we, we want to add more uh, public uh, base layers. So, an um, FTP tab uh, where you can define the, now it's only F and not a, a secure FTP, uh, uh, you can define your credentials. And uh, this way, uh, it's made for help the, the, the user to uh, very easily synchronize the local data on his computer and uh, the data on the remote server. I will show you later. Uh, a log uh, text field, some help. Uh, we, can, we can read it. Uh, it. It describes all the different features and uh, some text, um, which presents uh, the lead map. So I will just show you the the map. Uh, so this is the map rendered uh, by the lead map client. So it's a web application coded in a PHP with a framework. Uh, which is called JLX. Uh, so we use um, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript uh, to to produce the the, the whole page. It's not based on geo 
TXT uh, as um, QGIS web client is. So it's a different approach. Uh, we we prefer to have a uh, uh, pure HTML approach to help uh, building interfaces for uh, for different uh, platforms, for example. And here you can easily change the position and uh, colors and fonts, uh, just changing the CSS. For example, if I just change, um, or I will show you there, just general presentation of the, the application. So you have, um, I, you have here the title and the uh, description taken from the WMS properties, uh, some tools uh, to open and close the, the panels, uh, to move, file, <coughs> zoom, zoom out, and uh, the, the three scales you define uh, in, the, in the project. So this is uh, the, the, the more important panel here. Um, it uh, it gives all the different uh, layers you have in your, in your project, and as you can see, uh, some um, some layers are, are grayed out uh, because at these scales uh, you cannot see them. We, we use the scale-based visibility of the layers to define which can be uh, used or not, and changing only the CSS file, you can uh, decide to hide the the layers which must not be uh, visible here. Uh, if we zoom in, the airport will show up. Uh, if we zoom out, it will, uh, it will be uh, deactivated and it will, uh, it will be gray. gray out. Uh, here we, we have, uh, I will try to, to show you a bit better. Here we have some uh, information uh, buttons which can uh, provide uh, external links to, uh, I don't know, Wikipedia page, for example, and we can use the bitmap plugin to change that. And uh, you have here one very important thing, it's base layers. I can define in the bitmap uh, plugin which layers or groups can uh, be set as base layers so that um, you only can show one base layer at a time. And, uh, and I will now return the QGIS, QGIS project. Uh, this is okay. So, uh, for example, I can change here. Um, I don't know. Um, group view. I can change for the hydrologic group. I can say I want this group to be. Uh, a layer, not a group, but a layer. So in my web application, the group hydro will uh, draw the whole three layers here. So I, I just have to say and synchronize here, and say OK, and it will do a FTP synchronization using LFTP in Linux and WinCSP in Windows that we have to, to put in the in the um, local territory and uh, give the, the full path of the, the executables. So I have I have done my synchronization. Now I can return uh, here and uh, you see here I have three layers. If I refresh, you have only uh, one group and the legend uh, displays uh, the three layers layer and legend. So this is a good way to hide some uh, some layers to the, to the to the user, and you can this way use, for example, a group uh, with five layers, one for each scale. Uh, if you have a symbology different for each scale, for example, uh, 200, uh, um, um, 1000, uh, 150, 100, uh, so that you can only one uh, you can have only one here. Um, layer which uh, display different layers in your QGIS um, project. This is one of the examples and what um, I will show you some other, uh, some other uh, feature such as you can, uh, you can define to have single type or uh, no single type or layer for example 
we have this one called region. I have several single side because I want uh, I have a problem with the labels which are translating because of a layer to the web client which ask uh, 256 uh, square uh, tiles. So if I uh, if I just unclick this uh, and synchronize, I will. You will see the the region is not single tile anymore, and you will have some label labeling problems uh, like that because each uh, the image is composed with this tiles. Um, another um, new feature in the last uh, release was the ability to to ask for. So this base layer, for example, if I want if I want to use the Google Satellite uh, base layer, uh, it will overpass the scales here because uh, Google Maps or uh, OpenStreetMap data uh, has uh, have uh, their own scales defined in, uh, in open layers. So uh, this is a good way if you have no uh, well suited base layer for in your project to have a base layer. Okay, wrong missing parameter, so I read the log and the log tells me you have chosen one external public source in the map tab, you must add this PSG code in the coordinate system restriction. So I, I will do that. Uh, uh, project properties and here I will add the Google Mapator projection. Okay. Very responsive laptop. This is real. Okay. So now I set the project and I use this map again. And uh set and synchronize the two uh, modified files have been Sent to the, the the server, and now I can refresh, and you will see that the the scales uh, have been uh, overpassed. I have the um, the Google uh, map, and I have to wait for the zoom in. Come on. My server is not responding anymore. Uh, what? Okay, I will go back uh, and <coughs> go back then. I'll show you in the in my, This is uh, um, an external uh, um, web page, so I will try and look at those to see to show you. Um, one, uh, one of the features I, I want to show you is um, uh, I will show you the, the cache. Um, what, one interesting thing is we, we provide a very basic but uh, easy way to, to tell the, the web client to ask, not to ask QGIS server the, the images, but a uh, cache uh, which uh, could be uh, which has to be uh, pre-configured by the, the server uh, um, developer and uh, contributor. And so uh, I will change the project to show this feature. Uh, I will open a, a local project uh, which is based on OpenStreetMap data. Uh, which is which has a main group uh, called Fongras, so different layers, and you, you can see uh, it's uh, just a symbology of roads. Uh, it can be quite um, heavy for the server to to produce this map, so it's here. It's uh, local this one. So if I refresh, uh, it's tiled, so it, it asks. Uh, 
to QGIS server, it's a bit uh, heavy process, so it's slow. Uh, this is why um, I pre-configure a map cache. Uh, it, it was used to know as a not geo cache, now it's map cache. It's uh, a cache, a file cache application uh, provided uh, which has been uh, joined to the map server on a project. Uh, and it's a very efficient way to, to cache uh, types. So uh, I will just change here the Lima configuration. Uh, yeah. And I have to. So I will just pick from the. Yeah, and just say because it's local. And what, uh, what Okay, and now <coughs> and you see it's it's cash. So it's very very uh, very efficient way to to, to get the size. So the big problem here is you have to pre-configure the, the cache. So uh, if you if you see I'll show you the file. Uh, the, 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 the cache. You see here, you have to define all of all the resolutions uh, of your project. So you have to to look after the resolution in open layers for this project. Uh, you have to uh, to give the real extent that you provided in the WNS. Uh, extent uh, part of the, the project properties. Uh, so it's not very easy way, but when you have done it once, it works. So what I'm trying to do now is, um, is to use the, the power of PHP and template-based uh, page generation, generate the configuration XML file of map cache uh, dynamically. So, so I will Walk through the project, uh, see which layers are um, are asked to be cached, and uh, create the the cache type, and then wait, uh, reload the, the server if needed, or wait uh, for a, a way to to reload it uh, dynamically. So this is, uh, this is I think we we usually have one question regarding uh, QGIS server. It's Okay, uh, but what are the um, what is the speed of uh, QGIS for saving, saving um, map images compared to map server compared to other ones? Uh, I think cache is the, the answer. So normally you, you never even with map cache or uh, map server, I mean you you rarely use uh, an image map server without uh. cache. So um, yeah, I'm sorry. Use it, and uh, you can confi configure it using Lidmap. Um, how did you How did you deal with uh, switching layers on and off? Because that's one problem with the cache. You yeah, the, the this is a bit of a uh, do-it-yourself uh, thing. You have to define exactly the same uh, name of the layer defined in QGIS and in the configuration file. So this way, when you pick on and off. Uh, the, the thing, the live map web client, uh, the JavaScript, just have the the cache URL, URL um, and not QGIS one. I, I will show you the. But um, so, but on your legend there, you've got um, no option to choose different layers anymore because it's you're using a pre-rendered cache. Exactly. Um, yeah. um, is this what you're showing now? Oh. No, I will show you the. This is the configuration file of this map where you can you can just configure the the, the address of the WNS server and your cache server address. So you can use file cache or map cache or whatever. And uh, you yeah you have to to use exactly the same name. Here is the, the name of my QGIS group to, to provide the cache and. Um, 
if you look at the at the code uh, uh, when the the layer config cache is true, you use the cache alloy URL URL you have passed uh, before, and if not, you use the double URL. Yes, where that, that is all that is done here. So. Um, my question is really, uh, uh, when your clients say they want it fast, you can give it fast. When they say they want to be able to turn layers on and off, you can only do it without caching. Uh, have you thought of some approach for combining the two, like caching individual layers and then compositing them uh, in, on your server side? Um, I, haven't, uh, I haven't think about it. Uh, hmm. What would be the advantage of doing? Well, say for example, the client doesn't want to see the railway line on the map. So in the old, in the first demonstration, we showed they can turn it off and they see just the information they're interested in. Yeah. In the new, uh, in this one, there's not possibility to do it because everything's pre-rendered. No, yeah. it's not because it's pre-rendered. It's because in uh, in the QGIS um, project. Uh, in, uh, imagine uh, this layer is grouped as layer. Yeah. Oh, the whole thing is grouped. Uh, the whole thing. And okay. why? Because yeah. I wanted to use this WMS uh, layer as a cache for another mm. project. I will show you. Okay. Uh, okay, I understand. But the, like, if if you um, so if you have moved that to the uh, Combine the Misa and Formia, and I can't say those words, but um, those, those subgroups, if you'd made those group as layer rather than the top level one, yeah. you could have made cache per group. Yeah. Um, and then the compositing would have happened in open layers. It would bring, uh, yeah. from, the, from each cache, it would bring that layer in and composite it. Yeah. Uh, and, and the only problem with that is that open layers is not very good at compositing. I don't know if you have used it for this, but it's. Uh, Quite, it's doing it in JavaScript, so you have no anti-aliasing or um, the quality of the map right. goes down. Uh, so what I was wondering was whether you'd thought about, since you've written something on the server side, which is doing some magic, which I'm still not sure of yet, but um, to to do that, but composite is on the server side and send back the composited tiles. Yeah, uh, we have many uh, improvements to do server side. We, we can we want to provide the uh, right uh, management. Uh, with uh, I don't know how now it has to be a, a simple way that you can access from the plugin. So I don't know how if I give server access in the plugin if it's only configuration file with name and Encoded password. I don't know, but uh, we want to do some uh, something like that. Um, um, yeah, I wanted to show you two two other features. So this is another uh, project which is based on the plan graph on the this this cache here is used here as an, uh, a base layer. So I have another. QGIS, QGIS project for that. Uh, uh, just uh, where is my QGIS? Yeah. Unity with the multi screen is very hard to to <laughs> to use. So again, I will just do that. We open QGIS because sometimes I'm not in here. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, please speak. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. I just got to make the game. Window. Okay, let's do not show QGIS. I uh, just wanted to show uh, the, um, the layer uh, defined before in the, the cache can be used in other QGIS projects and so can be used for this map uh, publication too. Um, some other features, uh, you have some uh, get feature info uh, pop up and I uh, I've tried to yesterday I just created the these things, if uh, it's an image detected, it displays the image. If it's, if it's a link, it displays the link. What uh, I discovered before, which is very, very uh, efficient in QGIS, you can define the layer properties, uh, the, an aliases, aliases for the column names, which are uh, taken into account by the, the server. And you can decide which columns are hidden or not. And this way, you can uh, develop pop-ups very, very easily with only the columns you want to. And uh, here it's just an example of pictures um, provided uh, by the data in the attribute table. Uh, another, another layer here is uh, some, uh, some gas uh, chips, I think. Uh, uh, here is the, I, I haven't hidden uh, any um, any column, so it's a big, big uh, uh, attribute table. But uh, you can hide whatever you want, and uh, QGI server just brings the thing. Um, here, I think uh, I quite finished. If you want me to speak a bit more about the server side, uh, I can explain uh, what it does and, uh, and how and why we've chosen to 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 use PHP as a proxy between uh, the WMS uh, server and uh, the, the web client. Maybe you should take some questions first. Or yeah, you have some questions. I have a question if you want to see it. I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, the, the listener web client, is it, is it bound to the, to the plugin or you can just use it without it? It is bound to the plugin because uh, in the plugin, we, what we do is collect uh, the, the user uh, parameters uh, when he he activates some uh, combo box or change the, the title abstract. Uh, every uh, parameter is uh, saved in the configuration file in G JSON form, and it is shipped with the project uh, file and the, the data. And the client, the, the JavaScript part of the client, uses the, the JSON to um, to, to to dynamic, dynamically build the, the layer tree and uh, to have some other options uh, like pop-up or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the, we, we need that because the get capabilities uh, does not return uh, mean or max set of the for the layers. So you have uh, to you have you need another configuration file to uh, to detect what are the scales of the, your layers. Before uh, QGIS 1.8, you, you couldn't uh, set title and an abstract for the for the layer, uh, and it wasn't uh, sent with the get capabilities with the WMS server. So we needed to add this as a configuration in, the, in this map. So yeah, it is a bit uh, down, but it won't be. I mean, every time QGIS uh, evolves, we we will need less and less uh, configuration file, I think, because uh, we can 
now the metadata is, uh, of the layers are present, and uh, you can you can have some uh, other things like I don't know why not uh, sheet the, the min and max scales uh, for each layer in the get capability could be uh, an extended uh, way to, to do so. So you use get capabilities? Yeah, now? we use two two files. Uh, the get capabilities to know. Uh, what are the layers uh, I can have? What is the style of my project? The projections uh, and uh, the the architecture of the of the, the tree. And uh, we use the config file only for uh, is, is it is the layer cached or not? Uh, must, must be uh, must it be um, toggled uh, or not? And uh, what is the title of abstract you have chosen? So the, our config file is only for uh, uh, basically for small configurations you could have without it if the data was in the get capability. The reason I'm asking is in QBG's web file, we're planning to switch from using the capabilities uh, to the uh, web web context. Yeah. Uh, so this could solve. This is a lot of problems, and, and, uh, and then we could abstract this viewer and, uh, and change from use both viewers with exactly. Yeah. Uh, that, that would be great because we could them. we could use the list map the plugin. We could uh, change the name and say just publish the plugin, and just uh, use a bit of magic to synchronize the, the files between the local computer and the server, and all the and to build the uh, the, the Context uh, that QGI server could, uh, could send. The problem is uh, we should we should have uh, a new dialog in QGIS uh, in the desktop application to configure uh, this uh, parameter. Like for each, uh, if you need uh, more parameters, like. Uh, I don't know, uh, another metadata not present here, like uh, if you have to, if you want to have a, a link or a small echo or uh, other things we haven't uh, think about yet, but uh, we will need an, another dialogue in, in QGIS, why not? Or, or in a plugin, like with that plugin. Yeah. It could be great because uh, we could have two projects, uh, not depending on, uh, on small plugins to, to publish data. Why not have a choice?